can barely see how high up she is. Ah, it's all that in my eye. <laughs> Hey guys, so we just finished shooting a couple of episodes in Europe and we're hanging out in Spain for a few days. And we've got this awesome opportunity to brew a beer with Edge, so we need some help. Luckily, a few of our team stayed behind. Welcome to Barcelona. Oh, look at that, beautiful. Gaudi. In this episode, James and Martin brew a beer in a way never before seen on The Brewdog Show. You guys wanna go get a drink? Yeah. Martin and James are in Barcelona, Spain. They're here to drink. Whoa! <laughs> They're here to eat. The lobster is still very much alive. They're here to conquer. Somebody's just climbing up my head. Oh, hello. <laughs> Incredible. And of course, they'll drink some more. Right, what are you doing? Jeez, take it easy, Martin. And along the way, they're flying the flag for the craft beer revolution in this cosmopolitan capital city of Catalonia. This is how you use the pitch yeast? I wish. Welcome to Spain. My favorite tapas combination is uh, patatas bravas with artisanal beer. So that's bravas are like the cut potatoes, they like fry them and they have this amazing sauce. It's it's so good. The best tapa in Spain is jamón. Because we're in Barcelona, so the jamón is incredible here. Small little octopus pieces which are amazing with garlic. A pan con tomate, which is uh, Spanish bread with tomato. I love like um, fish or seafood. The best one, like the best tapas ever, which is really caloric but lovely, is the Bravas chips. It melts in your mouth. And of course with a beer, a really cold beer, like this small, nothing more. Spanish beer is ambiguous, like there are good ones, there are bad ones, but as long as it's cold, I'm quite fine with it. Everything, I don't know, all the tapas go with beer. That's it. <laughs> beer. That's all I can say. James Watt and Martin Dickey are uh, back. I can feel that. To collaborate with the best brewers in the world Whoa. and brew a beer in the dumbest way possible. Whoa. Basically, it's the same shit they've always done. It's not bad. This is the Brew Dog Show. Barcelona is a phenomenal city when it comes to culture, with over 70 parks, 60 museums, 20 Michelin star restaurants, and some of the most beautiful architecture on the planet. And also now an incredible emerging craft beer culture too. Yeah. I'm starving, fancy some tapas. Some tapas for you. Ooh, there's some more. There's a lot. The boys are headed to Vaso de Oro, home of the first ever tapas served in Barcelona. There they'll meet up with Riley Finnegan, head brewer from Edge Brewing Company, voted best new brewery in the world in 2014. Edge uses ingredients from America. They brew on an American-made system and predominantly stick with American-style recipes. This brewery is so American, it might just pass as an embassy. But Riley thinks nothing goes better with American-style beer than traditional Spanish tapas. Riley. Hey, how's it going, guys? Mi Gabriel. Encantado. Hey, Bienvenidos. Gabriel, Martin. Welcome. Let's grab a seat. Nah, let's go to the back room. Perfect. Do you? Thank you. I wonder if what happens in the back. I don't know. It sounds awesome. Yeah. Vaso de Oro, or the Golden Glass, is a bar with more than 50 years of history in the seaside neighborhood of Barceloneta. Besides preparing some of the best tapas in town, they serve exceptional handcrafted beer made by their charismatic owner, Gabriel Fort Siscar. He's a third generation brewer and first generation craft pioneer in the Barcelona beer scene. Oh, this is the VIP suite. All right. <laughs> yeah, it's cool back here. Wow, what's this? Welcome to Vaso de Oro. Very excited to be here. Salud. 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 This is their very excellent pilsner. It is such a difficult style to do well, and this is just such an amazing example of a Keller pils. It's yeah. fantastic. Incredibly drinkable, too. Almost too drinkable. How long have we got back here? La mujer, la amante perfecta, no la pilsner a todas horas. Makes you happy. It's a beer I love to drink all day. And it's the perfect beer for pairing with Spanish tapas. La historia de las tapas empezó hace cien, unos 100 años en la hostelería. Nosotros llevamos cuatro generaciones, ¿no? Gabriel's tradition and family history comes from four generations and 100 years of bringing Spanish culinary tradition to that small plate platform. 
Y siempre con la cerveza, ¿no? Las tapas y la cerveza, que es mucho más divertido, ¿no? So I think what you said was tapas and beer is a match made in heaven. Nailed it. I just guessed. <laughs> I would say you're fluent in Spanish at this Thank point. Thank you, I'll take it, it's the beer. And what's your experience here in Barcelona, Riley? After six years brewing in Colorado, I came over to Barcelona when I had the opportunity, because who can say no to Barcelona? It's a very tight-knit community with influences from, from all over, really. Two Scotsmen, one Spaniard, one American walk in a tapas bar. Sounds like the start of a joke, but it's actually a fact. So actually the joke is that none of us have been eating tapas yet. Traemos. Rápido, 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 eso es fácil. Rápido, rápido. Rápido, eso es good. Gracias, señor. Gracias, señor. Tapas were born from being served on top of your beer so that when you're sitting out in a plaza having a beer, the flies wouldn't enter your beer. Kind of like that. <laughs> so tapas has its origins in beer and beer culture. In being... Una tapa. We've got to find a way to do that with the beer that we're making. I bet we can dig up some pan y jamón. How's your beer, Martin? Taste it and tell me it's, what you think. It's a dry salmon pilsner. <laughs> <laughs> it's a dry salmon pilsner. It might be the next big thing, who knows? <laughs> what is this vase? What you're looking at here is a porron, traditional Catalan drinking vessel that has been commandeered, if you will, by the craft beer movement. How does it work? You want to find out? Yes. He would love to. I would. So what I've got here is our passion fruit Berliner Weiss, Apasionada. I could bore you with a real play-by-play, -play, but the best instructions I can give you for the Poron are grip it and rip it. <laughs> wow. That's quite something. It's <laughs> a money shot right there. <laughs> yeah. Amateur, this is how you do it. Whoa. That's years of experience <laughs> right there, boys. Science explains that it tastes better coming out of a funeral. <laughs> Guys, I think there's a much easier way to do this. Just... <laughs> I love the sour beard in there as well. It just kind of brings that passion fruit plus that kind of sour tart bitterness to life. Sour beers have really taken off in, in Catalonia. Maybe we could do another sour, incorporating some different ingredients from Catalonia. And I think having it a Berliner Weiss base would just lend itself so well to the spectrum of kind of tapas food, just to kind of help cut that rich, delicious, salty, fatty edge that all these dishes have. That could be a lot of fun. So we need to find something to use as inspiration, perhaps something we can kind of deconstruct and try and recreate in this kettle sour beer that we're going to make. La de Pacharán. De Pacharán? Sí. Have you guys ever had Pacharán? I'd love to try it. I've never had it before. So the Pacharán is made with Andrinas, a red berry that grows in the mountains of Catalonia around here. I'm not sure I'm going to like this. Only one way to find out. Salute. Actually, I love this. <laughs> mm, it's got a beautiful anise hit in there as well. Quite woody That's tasting. really good. If we could mash up these flavors with like a kettle sour base, it could be really cool. Yeah. Cheers to that. Salute. Salute. Usually to end these scenes, we have to stand up, thank you very much, and walk out a shot. But I think today we're just going to let the camera crew leave. We'll stay here, drink some more beer, and eat some more tapas. Phenomenal idea. Oh, they're actually are going. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs>
Fine. Since they're brewing a Pacharan inspired beer, Riley has the perfect connection to a homemade local source. So the guys head to Dukes, a premier destination for some of the finest cocktails in Barcelona. Owner Angel Asensio built an unusually long bar so more customers can be a part of his cocktail making artistry. This is a Pacharan. And this is Pacharan that you've made yourself? Yeah. And, well, <laughs> salute. I didn't get one. <laughs> sure you can. Salute. Salute. You get the bitterness, the slow bitterness, and just a massive aniseed liquor, a slightly smoky hit at the end. Do you make cocktails with this? Yeah, we can make something. So how about each of us give you an idea for a cocktail? You can use your cocktail skills to make them, and we'll see which one's best. Let's do it. Cheers. Salute. My favorite cocktail is a bourbon old fashioned. I would love for you to make a bourbon old fashioned, but with no sugars and no bitters, and the pasturan is going to take the place of both of those things. Easy peasy, let's do it. Always confident. And this is a oh, there you go. friendly touch, right? <laughs> I think it's ready. Me too, and I haven't even tasted it. I'm excited. <laughs> like seeing an absolute master craftsman at work is just amazing. You spread a little bit of grapefruit because grapefruit is, uh, well, it's bitterness, citrusy. Wow. So this is the Pacharan Old Fashioned? Yeah, it's gonna be trendy, 2019. You're getting so much of that oak, that vanilla, that coconut, that little bit of spiciness, but then it just explodes to life with the infusion of the pasturan, and it is so intense, it's so punchy. I love this, it's phenomenal. So we made the classic because we need to respect the classics to became something yep. modern. Perfect. Riley, your turn, what are we doing? I want to head into uh, Citrus World. Citrus World, all right. Yeah. And last time I was in here, you made me a wonderful citrus-based gin cocktail. Okay. So let's try with the pacharan. That's a lot of citrus. We're gonna call it the citrus low. Cheers, enjoy. Oh, we have a new leader in the cocktail race. The Pacharan is sitting behind a really nice layer of that citrus sweetness. It's a lemon lime kind of thing up front, and then it just kind of rounds out with that herbal Pacharan though. Plus we know who got the coolest looking glass. Your choice. Do you, I'm a little bit worried about your face right now because- <laughs> I'm always worried about his face. <laughs> I don't know if you really only want a shot and it's fine for you, you or you I think he does. Yep. Just, to, just to get like enough liquid inspiration. Just to get some clarity in what I'm thinking. Okay, Mark, in Europe, let's take a Spanish take on Italy. I like uh, the Aperol spritz. Maybe you could try a Pacheron spritz. No. I'm gonna make something better. Oh? Yeah, you are. <laughs> Fine. Idiot. <laughs> Let me check if we already... I like how oh, you've I... taken my idea, dismissed it, and <laughs> yes. I just done what you wanted to do. I'm gonna make something more Spanish now. I think that means that you can't win. <laughs> it means that I can't lose, I think. <laughs> you like Pacharan, right? It's just getting into the swing of things. We're gonna use Fino. It's a fino necessary Spanish wine from the south. This is something we make here. This is a blend of vermouth with a slash of gin. If we're going to be able to get Martin out of here sometime today, I'm not sure. I'm not sure either. <laughs> okay, what we're going to do now is like a throw-in. Whoa! So, which is means that Pacharan and vermouth, it's been aged for time. So, with this technique, we just open the flavors with the air. Do you think Martin would be able to execute that technique? Yeah, do you want to try it? Yeah. Okay, you can just start here and then... Tira, tira, tira! There you go. That's pretty good. <laughs> it's a reluctant clap. Very nice, eh? I think, it's, uh, I think it's really, really, really I'll good. I'll let you right? finish it. <laughs> I think it's done. Would, would you give him a job here? Yeah. 
you know how to clean and... Uh... <laughs> you just need to sell on my nerves. Yeah, I think, I think you do. <laughs> well, we're going to use a 19th century glass. Now... What's that? We're running a pump over here? Yeah. So we use something for the aquarium to make an air. Is this a bitter foam going on the top? Exactly. So this is yeah, the first yeah. touch for your nose and for your lips. We can say Pachanay was like a medicine. So we're gonna make a decoration with the pharmacy paper, okay? Like a healthy drink. Blended between Italy and Spain, bitter and using the Pachanay for you. It still retained the same basic color as Pachanay as well. Yeah, exactly. Love it. And the best thing was you took my uh, inspiration to start with. You then took it in both hands, crumpled it up into a little ball, threw it away, and then came up with something fantastic. Yeah. Three of the finest cocktails I've ever tasted made right in front of our eyes. Cheers. Cheers. Salud. Salud. And hell, you made them all, but which is your favorite? We're going to the classic, to the more fancy and the moleculars. I think I would stick with this one. Yeah. I think this is uh, full of Spanish flavors, north, south, center, with a touch of classy and the modern airs. And the skill and the concept and the thought behind this one is just mind blowing as well. Awesome, so I won, so cheers to me. <laughs> you did absolutely <laughs> nothing. So, what are you doing? That was like my one. So, I was fast, right? <laughs> You're the man. So we're going to need to find some ingredients to make this Pacheron inspired beer. Yeah, well, uh, I think I can take you to the local markets. Great, I'm starving. We're in Barcelona, Spain with James, Martin, and weirdly not David, who's on vacation and not returning our calls. Riley has gone back to check on the beer while Angel takes the boys to La Boqueria to hunt for the star anise and slow berries they'll need for their Pacheron flavor. Located in the heart of Barcelona, La Boqueria is a world-famous open market that's served the city since 1826. Open every day and home to more than 200 merchants, you can buy almost anything you can imagine here. Just got a great energy to it, this whole space. So many artisans, so many craftsmen, so many people that love great quality, that love flavor, just all smashed into one place. What are some of the things that are in the Pacharan? Pacharan has licorice of the anise, sugar and endrinas, slow berries. So we need to find some slow berries and we need to find some uh, star anise. But before you go ingredient hunting, you gotta have a snack. Gracias. Cheers. Cheers. So this is how fresh the food is in the market. The lobster is still very much alive. So my grandfather in Scotland is actually a lobster fisherman. Oh really? Yeah, so I spent so much of my youth uh, on, the, on the lobster fishing boat. Yeah, he's saying. Put them down, ah, okay, <laughs> sorry. Martin loves oysters. He's like standing there like a kid in Christmas Eve. This is a Spanish one from the Galicia. It's one of the most quality famous here. Do you want lemon or no lemon? I'm Spanish, so lemon it, everything. Sí, Salud. 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 So good. That's beautiful. <laughs> how, how do you say some more, please? I think I should just move to Spain. The food here is fantastic. He says to try the cava. I will take his Catalonia advice. Sparkling wine. Yeah? Sure. Cheers. He's very excited. I think he's been on the cava most of the morning. <laughs> I think he's been on it most of his life. You guys want one? See. Si. Cheers. You're in Spain now, you need to say salud. It salud. means health. It means health. And my health's going to be amazing after all the food that I've eaten today. Yes. <laughs> oh, it's very, very good. Whoa, what are these what? things? Whoa. They're massive. This is from the emu. Emu? Yeah. This is para hombres fuertes. This is for a strong man. If he's drinking this every day and he's 84, it's definitely working. This is something to wake you up. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> he was 84, he would have showed you guys that. I know. While Martin and James eat and drink their way through the market, Riley is back at the brewery doing the actual work. Try the cheese. Oh, we haven't tried cheese. Do you want to try cheese of my city? Yes. It's a manchego. It's a cheese from the chips. Those sheep have done a damn fine job. As much as I want to just like hang out and taste all these amazing foods, we're supposed to be like getting something here, huh? <laughs> Star anise is a licorice-flavored spice derived from the star-shaped fruit of the Elysium verum tree, native to Vietnam and China. Science. Ah, the anise. Where does this come from? This is Spanish. Spanish anise? Wow, it smells so, so good. Anise is such a special flavor. It works really, really well in dark beer. 
but we're going to be making a light kettle sour beer. This is going to be pretty fun to see how this works. How much do you think we need? Yeah. Oh, we'll, need, we'll, we'll need some more. A little bit more. That's a lot. Yeah, there we go. Star anise in hand, it's time to find some slowberries. Close relatives of plums, slowberries have a strong tart flavor and they're used to make slow gin. It's a liqueur made by soaking slows with gin, resulting in a tart but delicious deep flavor. Lucky for the boys, Angel knows just where to find them in the market. Got here the first line. I've never actually tasted these before. Be careful, they've got seeds. Ooh. Mm. Oh, they're so bitter and so sour. She told me that this, they came this morning, so we're a perfect time for Pacharan. And when we put this into beer, it's going to be sour, it's going to have the tartness from the slowberries, then we can add in anise as well, maybe a little bit of cinnamon. It's going to be great. I'm looking forward to try it right now. Ingredients in hand, James and Martin return to Edge Brewing to see how Riley has been doing with the base beer. We should do this every time we make beer. We should just like mash in and then drink as much cocktails as we possibly can, then come back. That's what I used to do in the night shift. That's what we all did on the night shift. We used to do it in the night shift, just in these underpants. I think that's how we all used to do the night shift. <laughs> no rules on night shift. You ever pee in a drain? What do you think, send it over to the kettle? Let's do it. I think it's this button. I'm getting to guess it's this button. Not that button. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. I had a very simple job to do and I somehow managed to mess that up as well. So now we're transferring across into the kettle, sparging at the same time. Sparging, yeah. How are we looking over there, James? That word smell okay? Yeah, it's looking good. It's kind of light, toasty, caramel, a little bit biscuity. I think it's perfect for what we need here. Nice, nice foundation for our slow berries. Hell yeah. As it's building up now, let's start taking it up to the boil. Yeah. Turn on the burner. Boom. All this hard manual labor today is making me feel super hungry. Come on. All day long. A watch pot never boils, so James and Martin leave Riley to deal with that paradox while they deal with the deadly sin of not eating for a whole hour. Just down the road is Reserva Iberica Hamon, a butcher shop serving the best purebred, free-range, acorn-fed ham in the city. Owner Angel Panella explains to the guys how he cures his meat for at least 36 months in the highest quality sea salt to ensure a perfect dry age that reveals all the flavors of this legendary ham. You cannot understand Spanish uh, food without considering this as one of the most important products. And where do the pigs live and what do they eat? They are free range animals. They eat like fresh grass, eat roots, herbs, little animals even, but mostly they eat acorns. But the very best ham comes from right here. Yeah, here at the shop we have, for example, shoulder hams, back legs, then we have northern, central and southern. We have a lighter and stronger, less fat and more fat. And so when you say lighter and stronger, do you mean the flavor of the Yeah, the flavor. Because when we say north, center, south of Spain, they have different weather conditions. It's not the same being for four years aging in a cold and dry place or in a hot and humid. And it's important to slice it very thinly? Definitely, the thinner gives you more aroma. Just like the depth of color, the kind of marbling of the fat, it's just a beautiful thing to hold in your hand as well. And then you can see even a little bit crystals like this, which are tyrosine crystals, and this is due to the long aging. Do you smell it? Do you okay, eat it? Do so you chew it? first, uh, I will put it on the hand, okay, just to become a little bit uh, warm at your body temperature. Okay, you smell it, and then you can just eat it. So good. Amazing balance of like sweet, salty, meaty, nutty. It's insanely delicious. Wow, you're an expert taste. <laughs> and held. while we're in Barcelona, we're brewing a beer that represents the city. And it's going to be a, a sour beer uh -huh. uh, based on Pacharan. So yeah. it's slow berries and anise. Yeah. I have a beer here that we can taste, which is also sour. So maybe we could try and find the perfect ham to go with the beer. Cheers. Cheers. So this will give us a decent representation of what our beer will be. I need a, a contrast, okay? And uh, this contrast must respect the beer. Try this one. Okay. Uh, I think that uh, the fat will work well with the uh, anise, the uh, pacharan. It's a really good match. The intensity of the flavor and with the fat that goes in the meat. It's got a nice saltiness as well, that kind of dryness adds to the beer as well. We will try a, a shoulder, see a more intense uh, meat, more salty. We will see if it's uh, better a shoulder or a back leg. 
for me, this one, the saltiness is maybe a bit too overpowering, and the balance in this one is maybe perfect. I am between these two, but I would definitely prefer this one. I think you're right, you know, that ham with the slightly less saltiness, a light acidity of the Berliner Weiss, and the spice in the nuts, I think it'll be perfect. Wow, I will tell my wife, sometimes I'm right. <laughs> And why is jamón so important to the food culture of Spain? We have seen this in every house, in every family, in every situation, because you can go for a wedding that is the couple, and then com comes the ham slicer. Okay, it's the three most important people, even more than the priest. People uh, appreciate our job, our passion. This happens with uh, brewers. They put passion, they put the knowledge, the skills to make a very good beer, very different beers. The same with ham. We are transmitting knowledge, passion, and love. Cheers to that. Cheers. You must put the glass here. You know, in Spain, if you don't leave, leave the, the glass, you don't have relations with your, with your partner. Oh. It's a popular saying. Okay. <laughs> so I'm actually shared in a hotel room with Martin tonight, so I might just keep the glass in my hand. Oh. Well, I've already put mine down, so. Well, you're going on top then. <laughs> <laughs> just to make sure, Maybe we'll have a, another slice. What I love most about Spain is whatever people do, they do it with so much passion and so much enthusiasm, and you completely embody that with your love for, for hams. Thank you so much. Did you just Thank say you that so full much. closing piece with a mouthful of ham? It's the only way to finish the segment. <laughs> I'm just going back to my hotel room for a while. Okay, see you. Which is also my room. <laughs> James and Martin are tourists in Barcelona, mostly just eating and drinking and not really worrying that much about their beer. Meanwhile, esteemed head brewer Riley Finnegan from World Class Edge Brewing Company is making a Pacharan-inspired Berliner Weiss. He's expertly prepping the overnight souring process, which is a wonder of beer-making science. But instead of showing that, we're traveling west with James and Martin to Castellar de Via Franca, where they'll be looking at a bunch of people standing on each other. Martin, this sounds absolutely and fantastically bonkers. What is it? Castling. Like sun castling. No, not like that. Hey, I'm James. Hi. It's Ernest. Martin, hi. Welcome to Villafranca. So if you come into, I will show you something about this. Castling is a Spanish tradition first documented as early as 1712. Originally a religious dance, it's become an acrobatic wonder as teams compete to build and dismantle their human towers as quickly as possible. And with James and Martin here, I'm sure absolutely no one will get hurt. It sounds insane. For us, it's nothing such insane, okay? It's like culture is uh, everyday life. How, how high can you go? How many humans high? We arrived at uh, 10 levels ten high. Levels. 10 levels? Like uh, 15 meters. And is, is 10 the highest that anyone's the ever done? The highest anyone ever So done. Villa Franca have the world record for castling. Yeah, yeah, it's insane. What was the origin of castling? Was it a really high building and they couldn't reach the light bulb? <laughs> <laughs> Not like this, more or less. It's a traditional dance from uh, Valencia and people try to represent the Christ's cross, okay? So they climbed onto each other and uh, the children on the top of the person did like this, okay, to represent the cross. And are the Villa Franca castlers, are they the best? We are the best, yeah, yeah. So do you think we could have a go? Yeah, okay. of course. Let's do it. Okay, so these are the shirts. Perfect, thank you. And these are your fascias. Fascias, okay. Is this the traditional clothes? All the teams wear white trousers, yeah. fascia, and we differentiate by the color. How do we get these on? You just uh, have to roll on the fascias. Martin, it's not a fashion scarf. <laughs> fashion. It's, it's quite tight. It's like yeah. being fitted with a corset. Wow. Shoes off the, the six pack somewhat. Yeah. Do you know uh, how to climb onto each other? Not really. I'll show you. Okay, let's do it. Okay. Come on. Your hand should be here. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> You'll get hurt. No, no, I'm fine. I've got this. I've got this. <laughs> Climbing on one side. <laughs> I'll see if I can climb on Martin. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you okay with the weight? Yep. <laughs> see, see. Okay. <laughs> it's fun. It's fun. For you, for him, I don't think so. But... <laughs> he was shaking. 
You want to try to? Over in. Over. Wow, what's happening? Which are for to go for it put my hands. I think you just put them anywhere here. You put behind him and you're behind him. I like this, no, no. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No fears. <laughs> oh, somebody's climbing up my head. Oh, hello. Oh, wow. Ow. <laughs> foot in my face. I wish I had that job. <laughs> oh, hello. Hola. Oh, my goodness. Ow. This is insane. Oh, somebody's got... Contact with humans that you've just met as well. <laughs> oh, <laughs> good time. Very strong. That was incredible. So much weight, and then everyone forcing together to push it four high. The best place seemed to be the first level up where there was a good hold on yeah, the ass. Yeah, good hold, yeah. So, do you think it would be possible to make a tower, and maybe the person at the top? <laughs> Use the peron so that James and myself can catch some beer. I think it uh, must be possible. Crazy idea. It's taking castling <laughs> to the next level. Yeah. It's not quite as crazy as what you guys do every day, yeah. but we'll, we'll take it. I've drunk beer in a lot of unusual ways before. This is definitely the most unusual. As if this sport wasn't dangerous enough, James and Martin are turning it into a new drinking game. High. Imagine 10 high with a little kid on top. Incredible. High jump looks really difficult as well. I would be very scared being the climbing person. Now, I'd be yeah. very scared being any person in that entire structure. Oh. The amount of shaking is, uh, is really, is really crazy. I can barely see how high up she is. Ready when you are. All that in my eye. <laughs> diddly, diddly. Oh. You're making a fine job of that, Martin. <laughs> okay. Thank you guys so much. It was amazing to see the castle being built. Amazing to be part of that and amazing to try beer off the top. Went quite well. <laughs> uh, can you ask them if we can maybe join the team? Yeah, great. Tony? Then Tony, is poden, uh, is poden afegir al grup? Of course, yeah, <laughs> fine so. Thank you, thanks for letting us hang out and we'll hopefully see you soon. Bye. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, bye. I need to keep mine in the wash. With the overnight sour complete, the boys return to Edge Brewing Company to add the final ingredients to give their Berliner Weiss its Pacheron taste. So this has been souring overnight. We're soured, we got our target pH. Boil's done, time to toss in some hops. Yep. What you got? Got 600 grams of nugget. 
Let's turn this from a beer into the pasture on beer that we want to make. So these are the phenomenal slow berries that we just picked up from the Boqueria. Sour, bitter, intense, plummy. Can't wait to see what they do to the beer. Should add a nice color too. Yeah. For slow berries, they went in there very fast. And now finally for the aromatics, these amazing star anise. Oh, it's a beautiful moment. <laughs> and cinnamon. <laughs> Delicate. So we're almost finished with our Pacheran inspired kettle soured beer. It's been quite lonely up here today. I think for the final step, pitching the yeast, which is drying up the ante. Normally, James and Martin like to go out into the city to brew their beer. But since they've been stuck inside this time, they've decided to bring the city back to them. Normally, we go insane lengths to make our beer in the most epic and dangerous way possible. For this episode, we decided to dispense with that and just immerse ourselves in the spirit of Barcelona. But somehow, the epic seems to find us. Inspired by Fiesta de la Merce, they gather up a crowd of craft beer loving gigantes, devils, and a dog with a flag on its back to help them bring the spirit of Barcelona back to the brew house. Do you know any of these people? No idea. We'll know them after we've had a few beers together. The only thing left to do is to take this Burning Man Carnival stuff of childhood nightmares parade out of the park and back to the brewery. It's been a crazy adventure. The brewing process, on the other hand, very straightforward. And quite boring. A little bit boring. What do you do if things are boring? Get giants in a posse and a dog with a flag. This is how you use the pitch yeast? I wish. <laughs> The day's been incredible. We actually set out to try to do something quite sensible by our standards and just enjoy the city of Barcelona, yet somehow it's ended up being one of the most crazy things we've ever done. Let's pitch the yeast. Let's, Let's do, do it. it. I think Cheers. we need a beer. Cheers. 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 James and Martin have toiled night and day to brew a Pacharan-inspired love letter to the city of Barcelona, all without the help of David, who's inexplicably and now irreversibly missing from this epic adventure. All that's left is a visit to Edge Brewing to share it with the locals and pour one out for their missing engineer. Hello, everyone. So James and myself came to Barcelona, a city that's so famous for so many things. Amazing beach, amazing wine, amazing people, fantastic architecture. And I thought, well, how do we take some of the amazing things of Spain and take it to the next level? And maybe... <laughs> we also wanted to make a beer <coughs> while we were here. So we hooked up with Riley, who's the brew master at Edge, who not only makes some of the best beers in Spain, but makes some of the best beers in Europe. And it's been an honor to hang out with Edge guys this week. Thank you. We went to Ducks, an amazing, amazing cocktail bar, and we got introduced to the Spanish delicacy that is Pacheran. Martin got introduced to a lot of Pacheran. <laughs> Delicious. We love the flavor, we love the history of the drink, and we decided to use that as liquid inspiration for the beer that we were going to make. So we went to La Boqueria, the market, and we tried all the amazing foods there. We also found the anise and the slow berries that we needed to make the pacharan. We also tried tapas. I think the thing we ate most of in the tapas was the jamón, and none better than Angel's from Jamón Reserva Iberica, and some of the amazing, oh, he's standing right there and some of the amazing flavors that's in that ham we thought could pair perfectly with the beer. So when we serve the beer, it'll be a beer in the spirit of Pacharan and also served with a little tapas of ham on, on the top. Now, usually when we make the show, has anyone seen the show? Yeah. Well, it's not been in TV in Spain, so you've downloaded it illegally. So um, <laughs> if you've seen the show, you'll know that we like to make beer in ostentatious, dandiloquent, over-the-top, epically dangerous and stupid ways. But here, we made the beer right there. Not all that good for TV. We should have thought about this more. 
But all that changed when we found Giants and a mob of massively passionate craft beer fans who helped us pitch the yeast and finish the process. What we're about to taste is our ultimate Barcelona beer. You guys like to taste it? Yeah. Does everyone have some beer? This week we attempted the fantastic Catalonian pastime of castling. It's insanely bonkers, but it's amazing what they do. So we're gonna try and taste this beer whilst doing castling. So Martin's gonna hop down there and I'm gonna do the beer tasting whilst I'm standing on top of Martin. The more people that can help just to squeeze <laughs> me together so that we don't collapse, the better. The only other time we attempted this, it didn't go too well. So let's, uh, let's see. <laughs> people holding you? Hand out, okay. Okay, so what you've got in your glass is our ultimate Barcelona beer. <laughs> this is a Berliner Weiss inspired by Pascheran. What I'm going to let you guys see is how we like to taste our beers in Scotland. So this is what we do. Hello. <laughs> how are you? I'm great, I've got a really sour hit. There's the kind of plummy, tart intensity, the slow birdies. There's a nutmeg, clove, cinnamon flavors in there. And there's the amazing liquorice, sea saltiness of the star anise. So when you taste this beer, you want to get it in your mouth and hit all of your mouth. So how you doing, Martin? You okay? <laughs> 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 okay, I'm gonna step down. <laughs> So I've been doing beer tastings for over a decade. I've never done anything like that before, but this is the ultimate Barcelona beer. So we wanted to taste it in the ultimate Barcelona way. And then I fell over. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should do all our beer tastings like that from now on. No. <laughs> I'll go on the bottom next time. By the way, raise your glass if you thought one of us was just about to die. <laughs> you've got in your glass is our ultimate Barcelona beer. Let's see what you think. It's just perfectly balanced. It's super fresh. I just want to get another sip. How many more sips? All the way through. <laughs> <laughs> the fat sets up the bright acidic notes of the sour that you guys made. It's a great pairing. Love it. You can see it. These are goosebumps. Yes. <laughs> is the goosebumps from having the beer or speaking to me? No, the beer. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> And have you ever tried beer out of the Peron? Yeah, of course. Would you show me how to do it? And what did you think of our human castle beer tasting? I was really worried that you were going to get hurt. <laughs> <laughs> and have you ever done human castling yourself? Not myself, but I'd like to try it. OK, so how about we try tasting this beer whilst you're on my shoulders? Yeah, let's go for it. Cheers. <laughs> So does the beer now taste better? It tastes so much better from up here. <laughs> we just want to say a massive thank you to Riley, to the guys at Edge, to everyone we've met who's helped us this week. Hello. We really hope that you enjoy the Pacheran Sour that we made together, which we really feel takes all the best things of Barcelona and puts it into liquid form. And we've paired it with this amazing Hamon Tapas. So we'd like to know what you think. So on the count of three, if you think this is an amazing beer, raise your glass up and shout, Ole. Ole! He didn't count to three yet. <laughs> This half of the room doesn't speak English. <laughs> okay, thank you guys. On the count of three. One, two, three. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out. Good night and viva la cerveza artesana. <laughs>